Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. When I got my new table saw, I didn't buy the optional stand for it. I'm sure it's great if you're taking it around and setting up in different locations, but I want it permanently set up in the workshop, so I thought I'd make my own. I've got some softwood plywood that's 18mm thick that I'm going to use to make the top out of. It'll be nice and simple because it's a 4 foot sheet and the bench is going to be 4 foot wide, so I just need to make one cut then I can take it into the workshop. One of the nice things about this saw is how light it is, so it's very easy to move around for doing jobs like this. So the easiest thing I thought to do was just put the saw on and use it as a template. I want to cut a hole in this ply so the saw fits in it. As all these contractor saws are about the same size and they don't give you enough support really, front, back, left or right, so it was always my intention to build a bench with added support. With this saw it's a little more complicated because you've got the added complication of the rails that slide in and out, back and forth. So I mark out where the saw and the rails go. Then I shade in all the bits that need to be removed so I don't make any stupid mistakes. I can then use the track saw or to give it its proper name, the plunge saw, to cut out the waste. This is where a saw like this really comes into its own, where you can plunge down into the centre of the sheet and make the cut. I can just work my way around the sheet, cutting along my lines, and cut right up to the end, but because of the circular nature of the blade, it's still going to be attached underneath, so I'm going to have to come back and sort that out in a bit. The main section for the saw body is easy to remove, and then the smaller bits of the rails I come back with a jigsaw and cut out. Before I go any further with the project, I'm just going to have a little test fit to make sure I've not made any stupid mistakes. The main saw fits in fine, and then I'm just going to make sure the rails extend top and bottom both ways. They seem fine if I get it in the right position, so then I've got to look at the next problem. I wanted to cut the slots for the rails as narrow as possible, but it means you can't get to the catches to take the fence on and off. So I'm going to cut out a couple of recesses front and back so you can get fingers in for these catches. This is one of these projects there's quite a lot of things to take into consideration with this saw, so I've not planned it hugely, I'm just working my way through it and solving problems as they come up. I had a hole saw that was about the right size and then I can cut the rest out with the jigsaw and this should just give enough clearance for the catches for the fence. My plan for the base is to make two frames one frame just going under the top and then one frame further down and then join it up with four legs. So I'm just going to mark out some 2 by 3s and then I can cut all four pieces down on the miter saw. As you can see this was a few weeks ago before I'd actually finished the miter saw station. So here's the basic frame and I need a way to attach it to the top but I don't want to put screws through the top into it. So I'm going to put some pocket holes in and these are going to be on the inside going up into the top so they'll never be seen. But it also means if the top gets really damaged over time it's an easy job to remove it. For the sake of neatness I want all the screws to be in the same place for the legs and for the frame. So I've made this little template that just hooks on the end and I'm going to drill some holes where the pilot holes need to go. I can now hook this over the end of my 2x3 and drill down. I first just drill down with kind of the tip of the drill to mark it out and then I come back, plunge all the way and countersink the holes. This is because I'm going to come back later and plug all these holes. So now the frame can get screwed together I'm not going to use any glue as it's just butt joints, so if I ever want to take it apart it would be nice and easy. I then clamp the legs in place so they're nice and square and then get them screwed in. 
Another reason for making my own custom bench is I want it to be a few mils higher than my outfeed table. Therefore wood will pass nicely over it onto the table. So originally my plan was to use a little square that came out where the saw went in, well this bit, for the saw to sit on itself. So I got that in place and then got a straight edge which is just one of my Festool rails to mark out where the second frame will go. Later I decide that I don't like that bit of wood there and I remove it. But it still worked for marking everything out. I like this method of having the saw upside down in the bench itself and then you know when everything's put together that the top of the saw will be flush with the top of the table. So the second frame gets installed exactly the same way and then I could put some supports in to go under the saw itself. Done, I can then get the top attached with some pocket screws and that's the basic shape of the bench done. I can then get it slid off the end of the table into place and see how it's all going to work. It fits nicely here but it takes up a little bit more room than my old saw but then it's going to give me a bit of extra working space and a bit more support. The whole structure is pretty lightweight and easy to move around. So the saw just lifts into place and at the moment it can slide forwards and backwards a bit but this is something I'll sort out later on. So where I cut this out you can see it's got no support under there so I've knocked off this little bit of wood it's just going to go under there and offer some support and that can get screwed in from the front and the back. With the saw lined up where I want I can mark out where the mitre gauges go and then using the festival rail as a straight edge again I can just draw them out. My plan was to route them out but so I've got a nice straight edge I'm first going to cut the two lines using the track saw. Then I can set my router bit to the depth of the cut I've just made with the saw and remove the rest of the waste with that. So I put that little bit of extra effort in earlier to get all the screws put in uniformly. And that is because I'm going to plug all the holes with these oak dowels. No, sorry, not dowels. They're oak plugs because they've got a slightly tapered shape. So I'm just going to dip them in some PVA glue and then they can just get tapped into place. I know this is only a workshop project and there's absolutely no need to do this whatsoever. But I think they're going to look quite nice, the little contrasting oak plugs against the pine. When the glue's dried, I can come back with a Japanese pull saw and cut them flush. And then I can go around and give everything a sand down. As I say, I'm making it up as I go along with this build. So you can activate the rack and pinion fence by just reaching under, but it wasn't that comfortable. So again, I get a hole saw and work from both sides to remove some more material so I can reach into that. The other thing I did was remove that plywood shelf and just cut down some strips of wood to the same thickness for the saw to sit on and then I'm going to glue and clamp a little block front and back to keep the saw in the same place. I give it all a coat of Danish oil to make it look nice and offer some protection and that's it all done really. Time to see how it all works. The saw just slots into place and with those blocks of wood I put in to locate it, it will stop it moving forward or backward so I can remove the saw if I want to work outside and each time get it back in the same position. The fence on and off, you just move the rail so the pin is by those little slots, then the fence hooks into place and you can get the catches on through those little slits I've cut. To move the fence, this little cutout makes it much easier to reach in. This is not the standard mitre gauge, but it fits in nicely for those little routed out bits and I also routed out some space in the outfeed table as well. So that's it all done. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.